We hope you found that. <laughs> Do drop us a note below. <laughs> but all the anatomy that you might have got, we've um... <laughs> I liked it though, it's going well. Welcome to the Aesthetics Mastery Show. I'm Dr. Tim Pierce. Hi, I'm Randy Pierce. And today we are talking about the weird complication Dr. Master told us about on a live webinar recently. We'll put that link below so you can watch that. We're talking essentially about when filler gets into the orbit instead of into the prezygomatic space. A, a few weeks ago, we discussed edema and other complications from tear troughs. How is this different? So the difference with this complication is you've actually got dermal filler behind the orbital septum and the orbital septum is a natural barrier. It's actually there to probably to keep infection separate. So if you've got an infection on the on the surface of your skin, it wouldn't go into your orbit quite as easily. So uh, it's a natural barrier, which means if you get dermal filler behind it, you may actually hold on to that in theory for many years. And that's certainly been Dr. Master's experience. And it's something that I think is probably happening out there and people are misdiagnosing it, which is why I think it's a really important show for people to watch. So you've done a plasticine model shows the anatomy. Yeah, so earlier today I built out this. Now the focus, because you can build these skulls in many different ways, the focus of this one is, is to show you the different compartments. So we're gonna do a close up of that. I'll talk you through some of the anatomy and then show you where the needle is passing and how easy it is to get into the, uh, into the wrong place, basically. Before we go there, just let me ask about, let's skip to the end and just say, if you do get some filler into the, into the orbit, the reason that you were talking about this with Dr. Master is that then it's incredibly hard to reverse. Well, it may not be hard to reverse, but it's risky to reverse because you're essentially saying, I'm going through your orbital septum and that immediately means you're much closer to the globe. And it does make sense that if you have, certainly if you've got easy access to an ultrasound machine, do it under ultrasound guidance. Now, there are people who have experience with the orbit who will be happy to do it without that because I know that's not necessarily how they would do any procedure near that area. But yeah, let us know. It'd be interesting to know people's experience, especially if you're an oculoplastic surgeon. Would you do it under ultrasound guidance or would you happily uh, do it knowing your anatomy? Because I think some people would. Okay, let's talk prevention first of all. Okay, well, prevention is ultimately all about your anatomy. And like we said in many of the previous episodes, anatomy is your is, is number one in terms of designing your injection technique. Uh, number two is the aesthetic result. But we, we've got to be safe first. And so what you're trying to do with your, with your injection technique is choose a technique that is likely to minimize the risk of ending up in the wrong place. Okay. Can you so show So that starts okay. with understanding the anatomy. So let's have a, let's have a look at all these structures here. The structures to know are the zygomatic retaining ligament here, which runs on, obviously on the anterior surface of the zygoma. And then you've got the orbicularis oculi retaining ligament, which runs around from around the orbit. So if you have a look behind here and have a look straight into that area, you can see we're actually within the, within the orbit here. And I, I'm resting this instrument on the globe. This is a very firm, on the, um, the orbital rim. So I can feel that very firmly. And th this is the key to understand. We've got orbital rim, coming off it, the orbicularis oculi retaining ligament. Underneath that is the sooth, and that's usually the area that we are replacing volume in. So we're injecting filler to replace volume in the sooth as, as you get older. That tends to get smaller. And when some people it protrudes out, and it's one of the things to understand about the tear trough is you're really trying to harmonize these three sets of fat pads, which is the medial cheek fat pad, the sooth, um, and then the intraocular fat pad can also create a shadow in some people. And obviously, we're not going to do much about that. It might be surgery that's best to remove some of that fat. Um, but you might be able to harmonize it if they've got lost volume in this fat pad here. So, okay, so this little structure here is the orbital septum. And the orbital septum bridges over these two areas. So it connects with the lower eyelid and it comes off the orbicularis oculi retaining ligament, at least from the same place. And beneath that is the intraorbital fat. Now this is where we don't want dermal filler, but this is where these complications arise is that somehow we're getting filler into this space. Now, if you actually think about how this, how easy this will be, if you imagine using a cannula and you're inserting it here, just superior to the zygomatic ligament, you might be superior to it or inferior to it, it doesn't really matter. And um, because at some point you're gonna to have to go into the sooth, which is here. So if you're trying to inject the sooth, you can see how easy it would be to just go a little bit too 
superior and pop into there. So if you can just have a look, you can see the tip of that needle is actually in that space. So we're, now we are within the orbit. If you add, add any filler here, you're injecting straight into the orbit. And even though that might be a matter of millimeters, that's very similar to how you might be injecting. Now, maybe you're going a little bit higher up, but there's still room, it's still possible to get up wherever you are. If you're injecting in and out with that cannula, making multiple passes, it could very easily slip into that, uh, into the orbit, and then you add a bit of product, which then causes problems years later. Let me give, just give you a bit more anatomy to understand the other side. So we have the superficial, the infraorbital fat pad, which sits on top of orbicularis oculi. Underneath that, you have the orbital septum superiorly, and underneath that, you'll have the sooth. So inferior to that, you have the sooth. Superior to the ligament, you have um, the orbit itself, which is covered with the orbital septum. So let's talk about how dermal filler injections are often done in the tear trough. Um, I'll just show you, roughly speaking, so this is obviously not my normal angle, um, but where you have the zygomatic retaining ligament here and the orbicularis ocular retaining ligament here, this is where you get your tear trough and this tiny space in between the two, and you're effectively replacing the sooth. If you're using a cannula, you're angled up like this, and you're seeing the tip of the cannula move, but you're also trying to be deep. And if you're trying to be deep, it's very, very easy with one of these sweeps, if you have a thin membrane, to pop through it. And as soon as you pop through it, as you're going to see on the next model, you're in the orbit. And then if you add product here, you're going to have a problem. So the other way people treat is with a needle, and this is onto the periosteum. Now, the advantage with this is if you're on the periosteum, you shouldn't be in the orbit. So it's a, it's a pretty certain way to know where you are. The downside is you can be very close to it and pop in, make a little hole um, quite easily. So you need to be practicing your angles so that it's very hard for you to be angled slightly differently and get into the wrong place. You can see how that angle might make a difference in terms of whether you're in the orbit or whether you're on the periosteum. So slow injecting, just kissing the, the, the periosteum before you inject, being nice and stable, small amounts at a time. Um, by the way, I'm not going into teaching you how to do tear trough on this. This is just about the concept of where you're injecting and how easy it is to pop into the orbit. I'm also aware of one case of blindness that was caused by injecting laterally, where it slid into the into the orbit as well, uh, and injected certainly affected the lateral rectus, and there was temporary loss of vision as well. So this is all down to injecting with not particularly well thought out angles uh, with respect to protecting the orbit. So what can we do to be safer injectors, you just want to be feeling this area before you inject. You want to make sure you know where the orbital rim is. It isn't always intuitive. Sometimes you think you're going to find the orbit in one place and it's half as it's it's kind of five millimeters lower or higher than you suspect. So it's a really good idea to feel it. And then while you're injecting, if you're using a cannula, you could actually place your finger um, over that area to protect um, the orbit so that you're unable to go too superior and into that and too deep into the into the orbit. Thank you for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. And if you'd like to download a picture of the anatomy of the orbit so that you can think how these different compartments are divided up and improve your injection technique, click on the link down below. Take care. Bye-bye.